round and round and round she goes, where she stops, even OPEC doesn't know. Spinning the Wheel of Fortune, Alaska style, a game show to understand the new realities of low oil prices. I think we're sort of on the frontier of public policy engagement efforts. How much do Alaskans really know about our state finances, and how can the legislature make the tough decisions without their support? Join us as we explore Alaska's fiscal frontiers. Sponsorship for Frontiers with Rhonda McBride is provided by Kupik Corporation and Spinard Builders Supply. Alaska, where there are old triumphs, but also new frontiers. With challenges as great as the state itself, but a belief the best is yet to come. Bringing you the faces, the places, and the spirit of the last frontier. This is Frontiers with Rhonda McBride. Welcome to Frontiers. This week, we explore an uncertain frontier, the state of Alaska's fiscal health. There are talks of cuts of almost every kind to our government and perhaps even dipping into permanent fund earnings. So we're in a bit of a, a, a dilemma this year, given that with the price of oil, uh, half our income uh, went away and we're in about a $3 billion deficit. Governor Bill Walker says permanent fund earnings may become part of state funding in the future. Lieutenant Governor Byron Malott says using earnings to achieve fiscal health has always been the spirit and intent behind the permanent fund. Uh, the notion, uh, the clarity of those who founded the fund, those who developed the fund, that ultimately the purpose of the fund was to help meet Alaska's fiscal needs. Now, while most Alaskans can tell you the exact amount of the permanent fund dividend check, few can tell you what the current budget deficit is. We did an informal survey at Middleway Cafe in Anchorage to prove that point. It's about four, four million-ish. You want to guess? Um, I'm going to say it's very high. It's maybe in the millions? The last I heard, I thought it was like... 900 million or something like that? Would you like to guess? No, no. And actually, I don't even want to see, show my ignorance here. I should know. No, I just, I, I honestly, I don't know. In the billions. And I don't know the exact number, but it's outrageous. Perhaps as high as three and a half billion. And while that may sound outrageous, when you say state budget, people start to yawn. So, what if you created a game show to get people to pay attention? A public policy group called Alaska Common Ground said, well, it's worth a try. So with help from a college professor and a former legislative aide, a game show was born. The garage. The birthplace of many great ideas. Do we need anything else? Ian Lang and Gunnar Knapp have been working for months to create this budget game. Each of these blocks represents $100 million, okay? And so 10 of these blocks is a billion dollars. Stacked five high in rows of 10, that's five billion plus the block on top. $5.1 billion is what we're spending, so that's what these blocks represent. While necessity may be the mother of invention, necessity of state spending is always up for debate. If you're going to spend this much money, then you have to have a way to pay for it. But revenue is a real balancing act these days. And you have to find as many blocks, you've got to find $5.1 billion or 51 blocks to pay for this. You're looking at a small scale prototype for the Alaska budget game. Each color represents a component of state spending. So the biggest set of blocks is the blue blocks, which is education. About $1.3 billion for education. The red blocks make up the next biggest expense, health and social services, roughly $1.2 billion. The yellow dots mean the money is tied to formula programs, so it's not easy to cut these funds. The green blocks represent all other state spending, the brown, about $500 million in oil tax credits, and the blue blocks, another $500 million in debt retirement. What is that purple one? This purple one is our capital budget. 
The state only spent about $100 million on capital projects this year. Compare that to five years ago when the state spent $2 billion thanks to high oil prices, which more than paid for state government. The legislature took almost $3 billion out of the savings account to pay for this year's spending. The goal of the game to stretch our savings as long as possible, perhaps using a combination of sales and income taxes, even permanent fund earnings represented by these gold blocks. This is like a kid's game, you're moving around, make it balance and so on. But actually, it's probably the most serious thing I've ever worked on. Each one of these little blocks now on the full-size version that we're building um, will be represented by this many times the volume. Gives you that lovely sound. There's even a wheel of fortune based on oil prices. When are you moving the stuff? Good question. And the next big challenge, testing the prototype on real people. Oh, oh yeah. my God. Three billion dollars. Ninety dollars a barrel oil, about twice the current price. So Write us a budget, uh, figure out how you're going to pay for it. Kim is contestant number one, a tax and spend legislator. All right, as a fiscal conservative who believes that our population is far too entitled, I'm going to institute an income tax. One, one term legislator. Are you going to put a sales tax in too? Kim does not seek a second term. Perhaps that's a good thing. Oh, $70. You get $1.8 billion of oil revenues. Yeah. Ben is a conservative. Voters give Ben mixed ratings. Oh, you say boo. Oh. Well, so far, it looks like the budget game is doing its job, getting people engaged. A good dry run for the forum. So now what we have to think about is how to make this work on Saturday. You should explain if you cut those, what would happen? Now the next big step, taking it to a larger stage. Less than 24 hours before the forum, Oh, that is so strangely satisfying. Oh, okay, it's super heavy. Income taxes have never been so fun. Ready or not, Alaskans will soon fill this auditorium, expecting to cross into new fiscal frontiers. And when we come back, let those games begin. From the size of the crowd at the budget forum, it looks like Alaskans are ready to tackle this next fiscal frontier. At Spenard Builder Supply, we're thinking about color a little differently. Our Voice of Color touchscreens help you select just the right shade to bring your ideas to life and life to your ideas. Discover your perfect color. Find it at SBS. Interior and exterior paint, quality supplies, and unmatched expertise. Shop our inspired and exclusive Alaska Color Collection, named by fellow Alaskans, only at SBS. We have a story, a story of 27 families that put 18 months of their lives into building a village, a home for themselves and their future. Our Inupat culture goes back thousands of years, carried by a strong sense of community, our relationship with our natural surroundings is at the heart of our culture. By investing in future generations through development that is balanced with the love of our land, the Gupi Corporation brings together traditions of the past with visions of the future. I just want cremation. Cremation specialists in Alaska. Can I have a service before cremation? Our staff is committed to serving your needs. I just want something basic. The simpler, the better. Specializing in simple cremations. Whatever your reasons are for choosing cremation, call Cremation Society of Alaska, 277-2777, or in the Valley, 373-8627, and on the web at alaskacremation.com. I was really nervous, borderline scared at the starting line at Mount Marathon. And I had done stories about it, I knew the mountain, but these are a whole different breed of runners. These Alaska trail runners, they're serious. 
to look up and know, oh my gosh, I'm gonna get to the top of that and that feeling when you get to the top. It's changed my family's lifestyle because now we're out climbing mountains every weekend and there's just always somewhere new to go, somewhere else to explore another mountain to climb. Finance experts say Alaska needs to deal with its budget gap sooner than later because the longer we wait, the harder it gets. It's a game they say that we can't afford to lose. A gorgeous Saturday. Will people care enough to show up? Still, the last minute preparations go on. And we're actually painting some of these little blocks right now backstage. They will be wet as we're doing the demo. This giant scale doesn't work perfectly, but you know how we Alaskans love those big ideas. I feel great. This is going to be fun. But it's not so fun to see how falling oil prices have changed the game. Oh, we get $120 and we get $5.7 billion in revenue. Wait. That's the game we had four years ago. Wrong game. Switch that game out. And now it's spin the lottery, and we're looking at prices. If we're lucky, oh, shoot, $50, only $1.2 billion. A loss of $4.5 billion, definitely a game changer. Where's Vanna White? The legislature cut the film subsidy, so this is what you get. <laughs> The first Ooh. contestant raids the state's savings to close the budget gap. Who wants an income tax? <laughs> really? <laughs> Marijuana taxes? With no new revenues to slow the drain on the constitutional budget reserve, contestant number one <laughs> fails to get reelected. But you know, we appreciate your public service. <laughs> it's fiscal year 2018. Still, no rebound in the price of oil. Probably not going to get me reelected, but I'm going to go into formula funding for education. I take one off. I know. Contestant number two also pushes into new fiscal frontiers. A little bit of the retained earnings. So I'm going Wait, to take you're taking my permanent fund? In fiscal year 2019, contestant number three takes more money from permanent fund earnings. You're still cutting more? I'll t do whatever it takes. It's almost gone. Well, this is the way the world works. You have successfully balanced the budget. Woo! Um, could I get you to tell my wife we're not going to Maui next year? Later. Everyone pays a little, so Alaska's working families don't pay a lot. Four budget proposals are floated, their merits debated. It's important to make sure, as Alaskans, that we remember where our soul is. Former Attorney General John Havelock wants new sales and income taxes, also elimination of oil tax credits. The audience votes and his proposal wins. Lawmakers in the crowd aren't sure the results truly reflect what the public wants, but all agree dialogue doesn't hurt. It's terrific that several hundred people took most of their Saturday to come here and listen. It's simplistic but it gives you that the dramatic side to a very dramatic story. I'm, I'm thinking about budget cuts that we could do. Outside of the auditorium, a little bit out of health care. Some service high honor students carry on a debate of their own. Their generation would be hit hard by budget cuts and new taxes. Yeah, it could definitely make things really expensive. Which could force many in their generation to leave Alaska. For now, the game is over, the props pushed backstage, out of sight, but hopefully not out of mind. Joining us now, Cliff Grow with Alaska Common Ground, which put on this forum along with the Institute of Social and Economic Research. Did you achieve what you set out to do with this budget game? Yes. We attracted hundreds of Alaskans on a sunny Saturday to come out and uh, learn about uh, all the, the importance and complexities of our fiscal system and our dire fiscal situation. We um, got substantial uh, media coverage so other Alaskans could hear about it both before and after the forum. We were on uh, live TV and also people can go uh, on the internet uh, and, and watch the 360 North uh, broadcasts um, either as a whole or in chunks. Well, some skeptics say that this is all part of a, a propaganda campaign to predispose people to raising revenue, having sales taxes, income taxes. 
Um, Rhonda, there were all kinds of ideas offered um, at that forum and throughout the events of Alaska Common Ground and ICER have done, um, ranging from substantial uh, budget cuts and efficiencies um, uh, beyond those the legislature have already enacted to our state budget to also including, um, as you suggested, uh, perhaps looking at new revenue sources for a state that is the only one in the union that doesn't have uh, a general uh, a, a statewide tax on individuals, as well as also about uh, oil taxes, additional oil taxes, um, and uh, some uh, use of permanent fund earnings so in the lot, budget. A lot on the table. Correct. Uh, you have an interesting history with the permanent fund dividend program. That's correct. I, I was lucky enough to be the principal legislative assistant working on the legislation in 1982 that adopted the, permanent, permanent, uh, the, the per capita permanent fund dividend uh, we have today. So how do you feel, given that perspective, about the possibility of tapping into the earnings of the, of the dividend? Uh, Alaskans seem to think clearly about um, all the uh, options and possibilities the state has, um, including um, uh, using some permanent fund, uh, uh, earn, more permanent fund earnings in the budget, or a substantial amount, as well as thinking about uh, additional budget cuts and efficiencies um, in state spending, and thinking about um, possible uh, new or additional taxes to deal with the deep budget hole and fiscal hole the state of Alaska is uh, standing in right now. Well, one of the comments in the forum I thought was interesting, Liz Medicine Crow said, oh gosh, you know, the state is like a billionaire trying to learn to be a millionaire. Well, I understand some of what she was trying to get at, but as someone who actually grew up, I was first born in the territory of Alaska, and then was, as, a, as a young boy growing up in the, in the, in the 60s in the state of Alaska, um, we had a thin economy then. People felt poor, but we got along okay and uh, Alaskans are gonna need to uh, have some of the resilience um, that they showed uh, back uh, in the days before big oil came as the Prudhoe Bay curve continues to decline and oil price prices look to continue in a substantial uh, prolonged period of slump. So we're gonna be in a world of hurt over the next few years. We, and maybe longer, we need to think clearly about our options and about where we really are. All right, well, thanks very much, Cliff Grow with Alaska Common Ground. And we will continue our conversation on our website later. Also, just a reminder, 360 North and Alaska Public Media recorded the whole forum. You can watch it on Alaska Common Ground's website. And up next, Senator Pete Kelly joins our conversation. Plus, a couple of you sounded off about our last show. And we have your responses when we come back. The Alaska Native Tribal Health Consortium provides comprehensive health services for Alaska Native and American Indian people across our state. In addition to world-class care at the Alaska Native Medical Center, our work delivers health services for rural Alaska. From cutting-edge technology for the best care possible, to modern construction of clean water systems and health clinics, to health training and outreach that honors our culture, our vision is that Alaska Native people are the healthiest people in the world. We can see it. This day has never been closer. Today, thanks to the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, hundreds of thousands with blood cancer are living a normal life. We're almost there. We're making cures happen. Join us. It was hard to do because I didn't know how she was going to react and I didn't know what was going to happen, but I was really afraid that I would say the wrong thing. Teens who think about suicide feel alone, depressed, and feel like no one cares. Tell them you care, and so do a lot of other people. The only wrong thing to say is to say nothing at all. You could save a life, no experience necessary. For support, go to StopSuicideAlaska.org. I don't know that there's an easy season when you're a meteorologist. This is a really dynamic atmosphere. We're in between some mountains. The Alaska Range, you can see it over there. We got the Chugach over here, the Kenai over here, all these inlets, this landmass, a big valley that kind of creates kind of a vortex at times. So it just is pushing and pulling and there's a lot of different pieces to the weather puzzle out here. And it can change. You change one of those pieces and it can just throw everything up in the air.
Well, it is not a game to our guest, Senator Pete Kelly, who is co-chair of the Senate Finance Committee. I mean, you have dealt with these budget realities. What did you think of the game? Was it too simplistic for you? No, I don't, I don't feel it's appropriate to criticize the game. It's an attempt to tackle a larger problem by people who aren't necessarily uh, involved in government, and I respect that. So last year, the legislature did cut the budget substantially, and uh, people say that uh, in the, your colleagues that it could be cut some more. You think so? Well, it has to be cut some more. Unfortunately, it's a, it's a tough job to do. But over the years, it grew when we had some money and when we uh, started looking at it with maybe a higher level of scrutiny back in 2013, we began to cut it. This year, we cut um, about 400 million, maybe 300 million from the day-to-day -day operations and about 400 million from the capital budget. So we had a legitimate cut of nearly $800 million. Actually, our legislative finance people say that you could you could call it a billion, but... Uh, How much do you want to cut? How much well, more? It, it's, it's an exercise that we have to go through to make government smaller because uh, there are a lot of people in this state, hardworking people who, who don't necessarily get a check from the government and they don't want us necessarily to start taxing them before we have done everything we can to cut government. I, don't, I couldn't tell you an exact number because the price of oil keeps going up and down. Well, let's talk a little bit about that, oil revenues. I mean, if we have sustained low prices, you know, what do you foresee? How do you, how do you expect to, we've got a budget that's about $5 billion mm -hmm. and about $2 billion coming in yeah. to pay for it. Uh, uh, quick history. Um, in 2013, it was about $8 billion total. That's, that's capital and operating and all GF. Uh, it was about $8 billion, then it went down to $7 billion the next year, then it went down to $6 billion the next year, and now we're at about $5 billion. So it has been uh, reduced. Most of that came out of capital budget expenditures. Uh, we're going to have to continue on that track because... It's, it's just unsustainable with an oil price that goes up and down. We have to find a way to kind of level that out. I am in disagreement with many people who want to start imposing taxes because... Well, let's talk about mm -hmm. the permanent fund earnings, okay. for example. We've got a graphic, and this was something that the governor said, that you know, if you look at what we spent on our permanent fund dividend checks, $1.3 that almost equals education. Mm -hmm. Education budget solved, right? Well, and what we've seen is that, yes, education budget would be solved for that year, but then the next year there would be automatic raises built into that and, and the unbelievably high price <coughs> excuse me, of educating people in rural Alaska. So what we would do is we would just establish a new high and we would begin to go from there. And a few years from now, another Senate finance co-chair would be in the same position that I'm in right now, and it would be too much money. But are you... Uh, interested at all in using some of the other tools, sales taxes, no. income tax? I'm, I am interested in the earnings reserve, of using the earnings reserve for the purpose that it was actually meant for. The problem with the other taxes is that they cost a lot of money to implement, and they go at the, I think, the heart of our economy. As I said, people don't all work for government, and they, they don't want to give up their hard-earned dollars while we have this inflated government. Government should be a, as small as possible. And, and I'm afraid that the people who are advocating so strongly for income taxes believe that government is just generally good and we should fund it to keep it going. But there are a lot of people in the legislature, a lot, a lot of people in the state, that believe that we should have a very small government, that it should only do what we need it to do and then fund it. You know, but at some of your hearings this past mm -hmm. session, uh, lawmakers were told that, you know, Government in Alaska is inherently expensive. We have huge geographic distances. We are a new state with new infrastructure needs. Mm -hmm. And we, we just have to kind of right size it. And, and I, I'm just wondering, mm -hmm. looking at that budget uh, model that they had, doesn't look like there's too much to cut. Well, if you look at some of the drivers that are in the budget that, that no one ever even sees, shot through the budget, are automatic pay increases, not for any kind of merit or anything like that. It just goes up and up and up every single year. We have a STEP program in there, we have COLAs in there, and, and negotiated pay, pay raises. 
We have um, travel budgets that, again, we've cut them as much as we can. They probably could use some more cuts, but we could go to electronic uh, medium to, to do our meetings. And, and those kinds you've of mentioned and those travel are small budgets. Things. You mentioned mm -hmm. that, and boy, the legislature has gotten some heat for yeah. some travel to Seattle, 90,000 uh, plus. Frankly, <laughs> Uh, I, I don't have a lot of sympathy for the people that are getting hammered on that. I think the legislature needs to travel, and I think there's a tendency, particularly by one of the newspapers, to, to pick at every single thing we do, as, as if every expense that the legislature makes is bad because we're in such a, a budget crisis. Well, but you're the getting fact heat, is, though. The fact is, this, uh, that, that particular criticism, that num number of staffers going to a, uh, a legislative uh, function, I, I think was uh, inexcusable. Well, we're just about out of time, but... But, 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 but Rhonda, that, that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about significant numbers, uh, and, and the legislature needs to look at itself, but it has to go and make some of the tough decisions on some of those formula programs because a lot of people in this state are saying, you, you want to tax us? Maybe. But you're not going to do it before you cut that budget some more. And the earnings reserve allows everybody the earnings reserve of the permanent fund allows us to pay a dividend, but it also allows everybody per to participate in the size of government. Just a quick question here. Mm -hmm. uh, the legislature is spending money, $400,000, mm -hmm. to challenge uh, the governor's decision to expand Medicaid. That seems like a lot of money in these tight times. A $400,000 uh, cost to defend a, an entire branch of government which is the people's branch of government, I don't, I don't have a big problem with it. We have, we're going to always have those kinds of lawsuits. They are a part of running a representative government. Uh, the fact is, is that we could just allow the, the king, and I don't say that disparagingly, but the, the founding fathers said, we don't want a king, we don't want an executive so strong that they just walk right over the people. Uh, we've got to defend our branch of government. All right, well, Pete Kelly, thank you for mm -hmm. joining us, uh, coming all the way from Fairbanks. Well, we do have some comments to share with you about our show on the Permanent Fund Dividend last week. Mary Margaret Hillstrand sent us an email telling us about her father, Earl Hillstrand, an Anchorage lawmaker who worked on PFD legislation. And she writes, Dad told everyone that the PFD is a reminder to us Alaskans that we are landowners with responsibility to be good stewards of our resources. It's not a freebie. And we got a call from a concerned viewer about duck hunting footage that we aired last week showing shots fired from a moving boat. Well, we checked with state regulations and our caller was right, no shooting from a motorized moving boat. And we have more information about the rules. We have links posted on the frontier section of KTVA.com. Look under episode 21 for that. Well, we Alaskans never seem to run out of new frontiers, whether it's fiscal or otherwise. We want to thank you for joining us. And as we always say, do you find your own frontier?